welcome to St. Anne's. I'm Robin Sewell and I do the tours of the art and the architecture here. And today I'd like to talk about the sculpture medallions of the four evangelists. Now, among the 10 artists to work on the church, there were two women sculptors, very unusual for the 1920s, but these were very unusual women. Their names were Frances Loring and Florence Weil, and they were born in different parts of the United States, but they met at the Art Institute of Chicago in 1905, where they were both studying sculpture under Laredo Taft. Now, in 1912, they moved to Canada, and here they enjoyed a very long relationship, both personal and professional, for over 60 years, and they died within three weeks of each other. Their work is all over Toronto in public spaces and in the nation's capital and here at St. Anne's. They had an old church up near Moore Park where the little parquet is, where they each have portraits of the other. Anyway, their house was a place where all artists went. Everybody gathered there. Everybody knew each other. And they say it was very stimulating. It was fantastic. Robertson Davies even put them in one of his books. Now, uh, of course, all the artists in Toronto would have known each other. And so when J.E.H. MacDonald got the commission for this, of course he's going to include them. They were really well known in the 1920s. Now, uh, they are responsible for the four sculptured medallions of the evangelists that appear up in our dome. They are painted plaster. And we begin with St. Matthew, who is always represented as a winged man or even an angel. Now, Matthew was a former tax collector called to be an apostle. And this winged man represents Jesus' incarnation. So he was made man and thus the symbol. Now we look at the next one of St. Mark. Now St. Mark was considered to be a follower of Peter and his symbol is the lion with wings. All of these symbols have wings to express their divinity. Now uh, St. Mark is also the patron saint of Venice and that's why you see the winged lion all over Venice. The lion is a symbol of Jesus's resurrection in a very odd way because uh, people in, a long time ago believed that lions slept with their eyes open so that made them think of Jesus in the tomb not not dead now we look at uh, st. Luke who was a doctor and uh, a friend of st. Paul and his symbol is the ox or the bull again with wings and because the bull was a sacrificial animal, this represents Jesus' sacrifice. Our fourth evangelist is St. John, the youngest of the apostles, and his symbol is the eagle, which is why we also have an eagle at our lectern. But looking up, we can see Francis Loring and Florence Wilde's plaster medallion with the beautiful eagle. Now, again, early Christians believed that the eagle could look straight into the sun. The eagle represents Christ's ascension. As it soars up into the sky, we think of Jesus going up to heaven. What's interesting is these symbols actually appear in the book of Ezekiel and also Revelation. And they were the creatures who carried the throne or chariot of God. These symbols were not just randomly assigned. Early church scholars uh, assign them to the evangelist according to how the Gospels begin. So uh, what I like about these plaster medallions is the fact that because they're so far away from us, the fact that they're in low relief really makes them stand out. When these four symbols appear together, they are known as a tetramorph. And in very early Romanesque churches, or even into medieval times, these were quite common. Join us in weeks to come as we look at other features of art and architecture.